Hello and welcome to Optimal Game State. Today we are going to do one of our monthly lookbacks. So the idea here is to look at all of the recent releases that we've got from GW uh, to, you know, look at the things that we can get now, we can enjoy now. Um, we're focusing on all the skirmish and box games, so we don't have uh, the full Age of Sigmar, full 40k game, we don't have Middle Earth, we don't have uh, Warhammer, the old world. Instead, we're focusing on these teams, or these games that you can see in front of us, um, some more of the skirmish games, more of the kind of lighter model counts. Although, as I was uh, saying to someone recently, you kind of end up with some of the bigger armies uh, if you end up playing these games. So quickly you find out that Warcryer, that kill team, uh, will get out of hand and you'll end up with one of the bigger ones. Anyway, let's have a quick look at what we have got so far in the month of May. For Warcry, we only really had one release, which was Grom Brindle, who uh, is only legal for uh narrative play he's not legal for match play so you don't have an opportunity to play in the tournaments still lovely figure we got some rules from in the recent white dwarf 500. Uh, i did talk about the slaves of darkness uh, dark oath release last month and we were expecting to get rules for those they still haven't arrived this month we it's not due in stores yet but uh the pre-orders have gone up we've got a this small dark oath warband that's kind of been released in the same way as the black talons and the saviors of cinderfell have and um, both of those did get warcry rules even though they technically weren't Warcry boxes and um, so we are expecting to see Warcry rules for them but again we haven't yet so really the only big release for warcry was uh the big faq we've done that on one of the other videos we've talked about our other channels have talked about it at length so it's a big shake up we got lots of adjustments we got lots of new profiles we got lots of fun stuff very very good uh, very very positive for the games overall for blood bowl uh, we did have a similar uh, or, well, we had a minor uh, update that did come through a lot of it was just minor clarifications there was lots of stuff in relation to uh, the vampires and uh, how their special abilities work um, the big change from what I can see is Underworld has been taken down a peg as their Snotlings now do Swarming. So Swarming was a way you could get extra Snotlings onto the board in your Underworld team. Um, and now that's, I think that's just been reserved for the, the Snotling teams now. So we're not going to see that in Underworld. Underworld has always been strong. The Swarming, I think, has been a factor in that. So that's a, a good step here, I think. We also got a model for Jordel. Uh, he looks quite interesting. Um, so yeah, um, we have, I don't think we've seen the full rules from him yet. He is a war dancer. So we're looking at move eight, strength three, um, armor value eight. Is it ag one plus? That's some of the suggestions. So block, block, dodge, sidestep, leap, and a special ability called swift as the breeze, which means once per game, uh, Jordel can pass a single dodge, leap of faith, or rush test on a two plus, regardless of all other modifiers. So very interesting. So this is an option for all the elf teams and uh, is a funky new star player. Legion's Imperialis did get a ton of new releases. Uh, so this is just the Legion ones we're looking at. So we got the fast assault. So that's all the, um, the bikes and the land speeders. Um, and we also got Sakarian tanks uh, and those drop pods are actually dreadnought drop pods so we're sl still slowly churning out all of the different releases and um, so the Sakarians were from the original box so you will have seen them already uh, but this is a standalone release for them uh, we still haven't seen the Predators as a standalone release so there are still uh, things in the pipeline but we are getting to see uh, like a steady stream of new models coming out for Legion Imperialis which is great to see. Uh, moving over to the Exilia side, we got more of the heavy tanks, uh, sorry, the super heavies, so the, the range of them uh, is expanding. The middle set are Dracosians, uh, which are uh, troop transports, which is something that didn't have initially. I think they only had the um, those flyers, which you know aren't quite as effective. And then on the right-hand side, we have, what are they called again? Oh. Bad. I knew what they were a second ago. I have them in my army. Um, but again, this is a case where we still haven't seen the Predators. Um, but the, the, these are from the, the main box. So again, we're, we're slowly rounding things out, which is good to see. Uh, and these are very you know, an impressive string of releases. Long may last. 
Kill Team didn't get any big releases. Now, yesterday, as I'm recording this, today is Sunday the 2nd. On June the 1st, they did get their new box release out, but that really is part of uh, June's video rather than the this May video. That said, they did get a... I, I, it wasn't really a full data slate like they're kind of used to. It was just lots of minor uh, tweaks and adjustments. From what I could tell, most of those related to stuff like grappling hooks um, and, you know, uh, ways of getting around the terrain. So it's kind of adjust the rules to fit the current setting that they're in. Um, yeah, so I'm not sure if there were any necessarily any real big changes, but uh, if any of those uh, kill teams are ones that you play, it might be worth checking them out and having a look at. There are, I think there is another one that I've not missed here. So yeah, it's probably worthwhile giving a list of that, or look at the, the list in the videos and just see what there is there. For White Dwarf, it was obviously the 500 episode. Um, I did pick this one up myself. I did have a flick through. There's a lot in it. Um, a good chunk of it is kind of nostalgia stuff in relation to White Dwarf and um, there's a, a great guide on how to paint Grom Brindle. Uh, there's some stuff in it. I have to admit, I kind of flick through it and then I, I put it to the side. For me, uh, it did have Warcry rules for Grom Brindle. It does have Cursed rules for Grom Brindle, which are all cool. Um, I really felt that this could have had Grom Brindle on the cover, though. Uh, you know, they, they it's been a long while since they've released a model with White Dwarf, and it's always a fun thing when they do. As far as I'm aware, this particular version sold out very, very fast. Um, I know from, you know, looking at some of the social media of some of the developers, painters um, in GW, that there's kind of a lot of features within this that kind of show off some of the things that they've done, which is great. Um, but yeah, it, I'm not sure what I'm looking for white for, for, I'm not sure what I'm looking for from White Dwarf anymore. Um, I tend to pick them up as a, a random purchase and then you know it's just something around the house that i'll pick up once in a while this being the 500 episode should have been exciting and it didn't feel like it was and um, there was another big episode in the last few years which uh, had you know tons of cards that you could play and bits and pieces and things like that i always really enjoy those um so that, yeah this one felt a little bit bad for me but hey it is what it is okay and that's it that's everything we're looking at so I haven't updated the Kill Team with Warcry because you only got kind of minor bits and pieces. Necromunda notably didn't get, um, hasn't had any of its monthly uh, Apocrypha releases, which I'm really disappointed with uh, since February. That always was a highlight for me. Um, I know to a certain extent that was content that they maybe had produced and wanted to kind of uh, get out there as part of first the Ash Waste and then the Ranting Succession. We are going to be seeing a, a Hive Secundus box campaign coming out soon. So maybe we'll start seeing those Apocryphas uh, kick off after that. So I'm assuming what it'll be, it'll be extra material that we haven't seen yet. Uh, Blood Bolt did get its release. Um, so yeah, it's Star Player. Um, they must be running out of Star Players at this stage. Uh, I think they've caught up on most of the things they're doing. Uh, oh, well, we do have, there was one of the two gnomes. Uh, the star players has been released the one on the ram so that'll be something we'll probably see over the next month or two um and then yeah obviously we've got a couple of teams that we're still hoping expecting to see so uh there is a kemri there is chaos dwarfs which i assume will probably hold off until they release chaos dwarfs in age of sigmar 2 um and there's high elves yeah, there's, there's blood bowl has Plenty of scope. It'll keep going. Uh, Legion Imperialis, delighted to see the releases are still going. Um, I have packed away uh, mine. Uh, all of the models that I picked up for the initial army have been completed and happy with that. I have a ton of terrain that I haven't got around to yet, so that's next on the cards. But uh, yeah, there's a lot of tempting releases in there. Like I'm, I haven't heard great things for mechanically, but the fast attack, I think as a single hole could make up a single uh, wise guards attachment that could be a lot of fun to paint underworlds were in the off so we're expecting to see a new underworld warband next month i'd say and then warhammer quest uh, actually it did get grom brindle um so it has got some stuff you could kind of include that uh dark tide release it's kind of warhammer quest adjacent i think 
Um, yeah, so we're, we're in a good place. We've seen a lot of uh, upcoming releases, and don't forget that we're also in the pre big release cycle. So we saw that last year with 40k, but now we're actually in the pre uh, Age of Sigmar release. So um, I think that's end of July or something like that, maybe sooner. But um, because they're going to be uh, investing a lot of time and effort and stock and warehouse place into it, we can kind of expect things to be a little bit quieter than we'd normally expect for the box and skirmish game lines until they get that out. And once they've finished um, publicizing that and kind of move on, then we'll probably start getting more releases again. Anyway, it's a good month. Uh, hopefully there's something in here that uh, you enjoyed, that you're looking forward to picking up. And uh, yeah, I'll see you in a month's time. Thanks for making it all the way to the end. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. Each week I put up a new video talking about one of Games Workshop's specialist games. The goal is always to try and make the best possible two-player experience. If this is something you'd find interesting, please subscribe to the channel and comment to let me know what you'd like to see in future.